This is our PageDuty Commons demo roundup. Today we're talking automation standardization for workflows with Bobby and Justin. Uh, you are here, so you know what time it is. If you're joining us later, thanks for watching the recording. It'll be great. Let's see what else we've got coming up. Today we're gonna talk, uh, we're gonna do some announcements. The guys will talk, there'll be a product demo and there'll be plenty of time for Q&A. So if you have questions, you wanna add them in the chat, add them in the Q&A button, we'll take a look at them uh, at, towards the end just so we get through all the content and we'll go from there. Next up, Justin will be returning, but with a different partner. He'll be with Orbin in a couple of weeks talking about remote location operations. This should be super interesting. So you can scan the QR code there to sign up for that one. That one will be Thursday, November 21st. Uh, we'll be looking forward to that as well. Also, stuff coming up. Kubernetes operations with Rundeck and PagerDuty operations. It's automation webinar. Uh, the uh, run that guys have been working on a lot of Kubernetes stuff. Jake and those guys have been rolling up with that. So uh, should be some interesting things to see there. Related to that, we will be at KubeCon in Salt Lake City next week. If you will be at KubeCon, please stop by, say hello. If you're going to be in town Tuesday night, join us for our uh, meetup. We'll be uh, five to seven local time out there. Uh, 145 Pierpont Avenue. I'm not sure what the name of the venue is there, but we will be there. Uh, I'll be hosting and we'll have uh, lots of folks around to chat with you and we'll have um, a speaker and it will be a, a good time there Tuesday night and you can join us there or see us in the booth. Additionally, we're splashing out for reInvent this year. So if you're making your reInvent plans, marking down the things you want to see and who you want to talk to, we will be right in front of the doors in a big booth this year. We'll have plenty of cool stuff. We've got some cool little games and things that we're working up for you. So if you're planning on being in Las Vegas after US Thanksgiving, that first week in December uh, at reInvent, please stop by the exhibit hall, join us there. We also have a couple of sessions, one on Monday and I think the other one's on Tuesday. Uh, so look us up, add us to your agenda and, uh, and join us there. If you would like to share your story of how you use PageDuty and how it makes you successful, please reach out. We would love to hear from you. We'd love to, to share what you're doing with PagerDuty, how it's impacting your work, your teams, and your liability. So um, you can hit that QR code there and join us for that one as well. And if you aren't on the commons yet, what are you waiting for? We opened a new community site in September. We're there to help folks out, have some chat. And, and build our community back together as we were offline for a little while, changing our platform into something so much better. So if you haven't joined us there yet, please do. We would love to chat with you there. So I'm gonna close my slides and you guys can uh, roll with it. Uh, if you wanna introduce yourselves and then uh, and we'll get going. Okay, good morning, everybody. Happy Thursday, my friends. Uh, thank you for joining us on this webinar today. I'm working with some amazing people with Mandy and Justin. Um, like I mentioned, I'm the weak link here. So uh, um, I'll just introduce myself and we'll keep moving on. My name is Bobby Zimmerman. I'm very fortunate to be a solutions consultant um, here at PagerDuty. And um, yeah, we're gonna run you through a little bit of automation and have some fun. And uh, yeah, Justin, up to you, my friend. Yeah, sure. So. Uh... Thank you for your time today. Um, my name is Justin Roberts. Uh, you probably tell from the accent I'm over here in the UK. Um, I basically do the same role as Bobby. So I'm a solution consultant. Spend my days working with cur current customers, with um, with future customers, helping them understand, particularly around automation. So that's kind of where my uh, my my area of focus is. Um, one thing I would encourage, and I, I saw it coming already. If you've got any questions, you can ask in the webinar chat um as we go through these sessions are quite informal um we will do a demo of course we're going to talk about why we've done some things and how we do them but if you have any questions go through i did see a question that floated by which made me smile and we'll, we'll, we'll ad i'll address it now as we go through so it says uh is the rundeck name still in use i thought it was now called pager duty automation so absolutely it's in use so rundeck as a name never really went away um it was always represented of the of the open source version so rundeck's been around and it and it and it's stuck around what we've kind of changed a little bit you know we we call the um the commercial version of rundeck we call that runbook automation 
um, and that's available in two different flavors one for SaaS, which we'd call Rumbook Rumbook Automation and then we've got a self-hosted version um, so we're not precious about the name Rundeck being used around um, you know it's interchangeable we use it ourselves you know if we somebody calls it Rundeck we, we understand it's just for us Rundeck is something that's actively maintained as the open source version, whereas we have Rumbook Automation, which are the commercial and hosted versions. So, uh, yeah, over to you, Bobby. Yeah, Justin, so you won't slap my hand if I say Rundeck in our little nah. presentations and stuff today. Oh, that's good because especially, I will especially not in the in not in this forum. We're all friends. <laughs> Right, exactly. Okay. Uh, I love it. So you won't make me drop down and give 10 push-ups or anything like that. So. <laughs> oh, no, for that one, you have to do burpees, like push-ups. Oh, burpees? Enough. Oh, yeah, right, sure. Mandy. That's right. Yeah. I forgot you're a big burpees mm -hmm. person. That's right. Oh, yeah, I totally I missed burpees. that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's funny. All right, well, let's kick this off. Have a little fun. Um, I won't slide share everybody to death. You know what I mean? But um, I do want to kind of set the standard for, you know, where PagerDuty is kind of going. Um, so PagerDuty's customers, right? We're really, uh, we want to drive that innovation and foundation for an operation excellence platform. Um, so these are our seven transformations that we're really helping, you know, other companies and teams, you know, move through their incident response and automation. Um, so I'll start towards the bottom uh, left-hand corner and kind of move over to the top. I'm not going to talk about each one of them, um, but the modernization and operation of uh, of your NOC, right? Operation center modernization. If you have a SOC or a, a NOC team that, you know, maybe they're getting a little stale in their day-to-day -day operations, you know, come to PagerDuty here, see a demo, um, work with us. We can help you automate a lot of their, you know, that level one, level two triage. I'm um, jump up into the middle of this, right? The automation standardization of center of excellence, what we will talk about today. Let's get those siloed <clears throat> teams that are so focused on their individual daily jobs and bring it into an orchestration engine of what we call run deck or process automation uh, per se. Um, and even in uh, PagerDuty now, we even have some of uh, what we call incident workflows. Um, as we move more to the right, uh, let's talk about incident management transformation. Um, as you use PagerDuty, um, our, you know, platform has evolved in the last couple of years to, you know, really drive that incident uh, management to help teams, you know, uh, reduce MTTA and MTTR. Um, so like I said, I'm not going to, you know, bore you with a bunch of slides, but I just kind of want to show, you know, where PagerDuty is at today and uh, where we're going to help teams drive and scale uh, moving in the future. So since we are talking about automation today, I just want to kind of say, um, if you're not driving with automation or with AI in your uh, platform, then you're probably going to miss the boat and you'll probably get passed up. So, you know, PagerDuty, once we're going to be a leader in that, in our platform now, we're driving AI, we're driving automation, um, so we can help your teams do the same. Um, you know, PagerDuty will be the first AI operations platform as we start to scale and move forward. Um, automation is going to be the, the focal point for everything in the future, I do believe. Um, yeah, I had a funny use case that I was going to use, but I'll save it for later. Um, but as you can see with automation and AI, um, you know, going back to our seven pillars that uh, PagerDuty wants to help drive with our operations platform, automation is you know, right in the middle of that um, and in the middle with that is, uh, you know, AI ops, AI driven automation, machine learning and generative AI, which PagerDuty calls uh, PagerDuty Advance. So what are some things that, you know, that we that we that I actually see as an SC from teams that are like, you know, why don't I adopt more automation? Right. So, you know. One of the first things that I see right out of the gate is, you know, once Justin gets into the demo, he, you know, he's you're going to see that he's very technical. I'm not all that technical, right? So, like, if I had a tool that had a really nice 
GUI user interface that I could go in and, you know, maybe do a simple command or something like that, that would give me just a little bit more confidence to be able to like, oh yeah, I do automation every day in my workflow, even though, you know, maybe I'm just using a simple command as, you know, LS, right? So um, there's no standardization when you're building out some of this automation. Um, so what PagerDuty can do is we can help build some of those templates and bring those templates into, you know, our orchestration engine, what we call, you know, process automation now. Um, and then the challenge of like, hey, the silo team, um, they already use Ansible or Puppet or Chef or, oh, we like to use the CLI tools from AWS and Azure and, um, you know, GCP. Oh, that's okay. Use those use those tools and just use process automation as the wrapper to bring that standardization, you know, to your, you know, to your team and other teams, right? So, yeah, so what we want to do really is, right, we want to help build uh, a safe self-service access to all automation for all skill levels um, in the, uh, in the, um, process automation server, right? It's all job dra uh, drag drop capabilities, easy for me to say. Um, there's a lot of templates and actually next week at uh, KubeCon, we are gonna release a whole new um, standardization of um, jobs, like a, a, a library of jobs, uh, you could say, uh, for one, um, it, with our automation servers as well. Um, and then at, right out of the gate, right, PagerDuty, on the PagerDuty side, we have about 700 uh, integrations out of the box. And now with uh, process automation pieces, uh, we're right around 150 different integrations and plugins. Um, Justin, keep me honest, but I think it's like right around 150 there. So, but definitely. And 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 more coming, right? I mean, that is the thing yes. that we'll see, we'll see more of, more more integrations, you know, reduced time to actually getting getting value from uh, uh, from the platform. Yep, exactly. No, you're exactly right. So that, you know, just builds into more of like what we're seeing from our customers demanding from us. So we're going to answer the bell and, you know, bring more plugins, you know, more templated uh, type approaches to your automation. So, and this just kind of talks about the, here's, you know, most of your modern tool chain tool chains can be siloed, but they don't have to be siloed, right? Just because the DevOps team want to have their tools and they use Ansible and GitHub and, you know, all these fancy little, you know, plugins and tool chains doesn't mean that, you know, somebody that's not so technical, you know, doesn't have the ac you know, couldn't have the same access. So let's bring all this siloed environment into one orchestration engine. So you never know, maybe somebody from the business side or the HR side wants a little automated but they don't know how to use a CLI. Um, so that's really what I believe uh, the process automation engine does, uh, you know, for teams in a, in a way. So workflow automation, this is the, the tool that's inside of PagerDuty now. So we uh, bought a company about 18 months ago called Catalytic. Um, and in that we brought in this uh, low code, no code type approach, um, you know, so that, uh, you know, again, back in office, you know, uh, you know, finance teams, you know, HR teams, not saying that they're not technical, you know, by any means. Um, some of the most technical people I've ran into sometimes are, you know, those you know, that team member in the HR department, but they just don't know how to build that automation. So, you know, back to the drag and drop type of approach, um, we're going to, you know, we can now offer that through the PagerDuty uh, platform. Um, so what this really does, right, with uh, bringing in, you know, uh, the run deck piece now called process automation, and now with the incident uh, workflows in PagerDuty, now we can kind of bridge that gap from, you know, technical, folks from, you know, DevOps, uh, you know, uh, SRE type worlds, bringing that automation gap in. So the business processes on the back end can have that automation, um, you know, in their in their tool belt um, as well. So maybe it's, you know, onboarding a new user, maybe it's, you know, HR wants to, um, you, know, uh, you know, hire a new candidate instead of them have to type out an email, you could build some workflow that actually will automatically do that uh, for you based on a certain condition uh, through the PagerDuty environment. So this is kind of what's possible, right? Bringing it all together, you know, kind of like I mentioned, right? There's the business automation layer um, where you can have integrations into like Google, 
go grab certain data from a Google sheet and then bring it into a PagerDuty incident or use that Google sheet to run uh, more technical automation uh, through process automation, right? So what it is, it's going to do is a no code automation, right? That click and drag drag drop type of approach. Um, you can still have the human in the loop, right? So like, you know, like I mentioned, Justin is amazing. So he has, you know, a lot of uh, tool or uh, um, things in his tool belts that he can go and use and has a lot of experience with like AWS and Azure and GCP where maybe I don't have that experience. So maybe I need to focus and get approval from Justin or from somebody else on the SRE team. So you could still have that, you know, human in the loop just to make sure like, hey, Bobby, what you're trying to do makes sense, but maybe you should do it in this approach or, you know, maybe, hey man, you're cuckoo, you're not gonna be able to do that, you know, in my opinion, so. Grabbing data, you know, again, you know, importing data from existing um, tables. So one of the use cases that I came across just recently, which it was a, a really kind of fun, is um, working with the customer to use incident workflows to call out to um, like a, another asset management company, go and grab certain data from that access, access management company, bring it into PagerDuty so that we can verify before we go run some automation. Um, you know, you are verifying host name, you know, window or, you know, operation type, or op uh, uh, server type, um, you know, what type of, um, if it's Windows or Linux, you know, all that type of fun stuff, or if it was like in a patching mode and that's maybe why it's down. Um, so you can grab a lot of data, um, you know, using, you know, uh, one of those incident workflows. And then, you know, like with process automation, right? It's a pro code automation, use one of our plugins or bring any one of your scripts, you know, into the server, you know, run it through there, um, have some fun. Um, I'm a, uh, I wouldn't say I'm an expert at Python, but I'm trying to get there. Um, I don't think anybody will ever be an expert because they keep changing it. Um, but I love I love running Python scripts from you know our process automation servers. So I'm not saying that I could help anybody, but I could help you get in trouble with that. That's for sure. So yes. <laughs> And these are just some ideas, you know, some idea, you know, some uh, use cases um, that I've seen kind of, you know, be, you know, working with, you know, multiple different PagerDuty customers, right? These will just kind of give you um, a broad, you know, start getting some, you know, technical, you know, use cases going in your brain. So, you know, when I start to see this, my technical, you know, brain starts to go all over the place. So hopefully this will help drive, you know, get you going with some use cases. And then, uh, yeah, I'll pass it over to you, Justin. You're going to crush it, my friend. Okay, so let me, uh, I mean, I, I'm, I'm obviously going to try and get a bit more hands-on here. Um, thank, thanks for that, Bob. I mean, I think, I think it's always worth, even in a demo situation, setting the scene about why, why we're doing some of this. Um, I am I'm just going to share, bear with me one second. Um, I am going to go a little off-piste already. Um, yes. there, there, are, there are a couple of things I, I, I did want to talk about. And I think, you know, when we talk about automation, right, with, within, within PagerDuty, everything has always been automation, whether you're, you know, whether you're automating the, the kind of the human side of a, of an incident or an unplanned event, whether you're, whether you're, you know, you're all automating or orchestrating how events behave when they come into your, your environment, whether you're, using automation to provision self-service environments or remote stores um or you're using automation for this low code environment like we were going to show well we will show with within you know workflows it, it's all automation right so you know i, f I find it such a, a nebulous term when you know when in reality everything we do in 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 sort of our it is is about you know automating people automating processes um, so what what I did, what I am going to do, because we're talking about standardization, we're talking about, you know, being able to um, self-serve a, a lot of tasks. I'm going to give you just a two minute overview, actually, of the, the Rumbook automation product, because I think it's important to understand that, you know, none of these tools or these things that we're showing are exclusive. You know, they are interlocking together they can interoperate together so for example workflow automation is very 
useful for handling things like human in the loop interactions for runbook automation which would take care more of the you know more of the techie stuff where where you you know where you where you're going to wrap up reusable scripts where you're going to run ansible where you're going to um where you, where you're going to execute those those run books from but this might be more of if you need some workflow in there if you need some um approval kind of process so i'm i'm going to show both so Anyway, after saying I wasn't going to talk for long and I was going to show show things, <laughs> I've spent some time talking. But let me. It's okay. You got to sometimes you got to explain the peanut butter and jelly, Justin. It's I, I, okay. Exactly, exactly right. You so, got to set it up, my friend. <laughs> so, um, I, I actually just want to pick up on one thing. This is my this is my Runbook automation environment, SaaS self hosted. Looks the same. Um, and of course, we have the, the the sort of the baby version, which is the open source run deck, which looks similar, has the same sort of uh, same sort of underlying capability, but missing missing the enterprise features. Um, I wanted to talk about one thing that Bobby showed with the islands of automation, your different teams within your your environment. So a lot of this is about bringing this into one platform where you can allow each organization within your guardrails the ability to operate their own automation capability okay so you might have a team that runs ansible you might have some that are running flows within within the within security you might have some that are you know that are simply doing etl jobs or something like that so this is my environment you can see here we have this concept we call them projects but in essence they're uh, um, they are tenants within within the environment and everything within that tenant can be self-contained so you know the machines that you work against the the jobs that you provide um the analytics the reporting can be all tenanted to that single environment and of course we have access control that means you could share that between different environments yeah. um and and we do see that a lot that the the, the the, the organizations want don't want to slow down that speed of uh, innovation or that that speed of working that you know the normal pace but they have seen that it's got a little bit wild west where everybody's going off and doing their own thing all in the right frame of mind but of course um you know not really with that with that governance that that's associated anyway let me jump in is my production environment uh okay actually, actually i'm in there now but that, that, i can show you that anyway so this is my production environment where and, and again we've we've got a whole hours demo of 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 this if we wanted to see something very specific so please shout up and, and i can show you but i'm i'm going to spend some of my time in 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 around standardization you can see i've got some capability for running ansible uh playbooks i've got some powershell deployment and that's very much the intention here this is one place to do all of these things whether it's self-service whether it's event-driven automation um whether this is connecting to my remote kiosks or my remote sites and doing remote updates in a timely fashion running schedules all of those kind of things um are, are quite important but i i'm i'm, I'm actually going to focus here maybe on two things one i'm going to show you a um self-service capability in the core product itself so this could be potentially run from within runbook automation um this is actually a real use case that i had from a customer where they said hey look we just need somewhere that my users can go into and request a particular instance of an application getting installed so i did very little modification to make this I, I changed some names to protect the innocent but i did uh you know i did very little modification to actually get this in place so you know this is taking a complex process i mean it, it's, it, yeah it's not that complex i mean this is this is deploying <laughs> deploying grafana uh jupiter or, or or wordpress with helm charts okay um and I know there are lots of other ways to do that. You might do it with your IDP. You might do it with, um, uh, you know, maybe from your ITSM tool. The important thing for us, I think, to start with is that we've got this capability of of wrapping that up into something that we call a job. And then it can be called by all of those things. You know, so whether you're doing it with, you know, our own workflows, whether you're doing this with 
um, we do ITSM tool like ServiceNow, you know, we have call integrations that allow you to trigger all this, um, or, or somebody simply logging into this, this UI. Um, I am going to create something today. We're going to call it Demo Roundup. And you, yeah, you, you, you probably don't need to know what's going off under the covers here. But I mean, in essence, what I'm doing is um, I'm pulling uh, some data from a from a Git repository. I'm creating a Kubernetes namespace. I'm, you know, setting up a um, a URL. I'm created an admin password that I'm showing you in there just to prove that I've done it. Um, so, you know, all this kind of techie stuff is happening in the background. And, and, you know, and as Bobby said, I can give this to Bobby now. And Bobby's got the capability of, of building this for himself, for other teams, um, you know, and, and all of all, all of those kind of things. So this, you know, this is the the kind of, I don't know, this is the, the art of self-service. And I've been able to build that just by taking the commands that I would ordinarily type in and um, and popping them in the UI. So for me, you know, I do a lot of work in Bash. I do some Python, yeah, maybe, maybe a little bit of Ruby, you know, CLI work, all of those kinds of things. I can take those and I can run them and I could run them all in the same job. So I could, you know, oh, well, I find that a bit easier in Bash. I'll do that. So anyway, I wanted to show just to show you this because I think this is an important part of the the standardization and the self-service story before we look at anything else. Now, one of the issues that we see and we have and we've always had with with this part of the platform is that it's been a very linear kind of process. So once you've started that in place, you know, it will run to, till the end and you can restart if there's a problem and things like that. But quite often I've been asked for, can we do something with human in the loop? And that's, you know, it seems a bit of a strange thing when you're talking completely about automation, but hey, you're in the real world, right? Some of these tasks are gonna carry either cost or risk. And I think human in the loop is a good, and it, I mean, it's been done in the enterprise for the last 30 years, right? You need to do something, you need to get approval for it. So that's kind of why why we've started to pull these platforms together. So not only do you have that deep technical capability, but then you can start to slot in process. So um, if, I, if I took a look here, for example, I've got a self-service job, you know, very frequent. I need to do a platform update, but I need to get some approval for it. So if I if I run that here, um, I can see it requires an approval. Now, me being a bit of a rebel, I'm going to run that anyway because, um, you know, I yeah, I don't care about any re approval. Typical SRE guy. It, You're going yeah, off yeah. On your I, own well, look, page, it's, it's about it's, it's it's about the speed, right? It's about the speed. I'll I'll, I'll ask for forgiveness after. Oh no, mm -hmm. it tells me the job needs approval. Please run the red approval button. Well, I've got to do it then, right? So I just can't run it from in here, which is my usual place of running. So I click on there, and I'm presented now with our workflow automation with a form that helps me i'm i'm, I'm actually going to fill this in for myself uh, I, i'm going to fill this so in you're saying i can't yeah. just spin up 10 ec2 instances and start data mining or maybe, maybe not no mining. no you, Dang you, it, you, Justin. You, you and you bobby's bitcoin no we're, we're, not, yes. we're not we're not going to be you, you know you, you're not going to be just uh you know, um, yeah, you're not going to be mining anymore, Bobby. You've got How to am I going to launch my new dot, my new, my new coin if I can't do that through <laughs> pager duty? Dang it! You're going to do Bob coin, I'm sure. Right? Yes, exactly. <laughs> like you're crushing my dreams, Justin, with making this requirement. So anyway, I'm going to pick a set of servers, and of course, they can all be pre-populated. The big difference here also is that they can be backed with a database. So again. You know, run book automation traditionally ha had very little state information. This is an area that we, we can have state and we can pull this kind of t together. So I'm I'm going to be set as an approval. Now, I could have multiple layers of approval um, and all the, the kind of things that you might want to do with your ITSM tool. Now, I do, I do have to say one thing. This does not preclude you from using your ITSM tool. So if you 
think you can get your ServiceNow team to, to build this kind of flow and they can do it quickly with no, no hassle, you know, you might as well do it in there because that's where you do your change requests and everything else. However, we definitely see, you know, teams like that quite overworked. This is this is not shadow IT, right? But this is a way of getting the job done quickly and having, you know, have having a good sort of outcome on this. So anyway, I'm I'm gonna request approval and it tells me now that my approval's been requested. Okay. So if I if I head off to my uh email, he said. There we go. I've got a request from my uh uh, from me, in fact, but hey, um, we should have worked this out, Bobby. We should have done this between us, but hey, you, you get That's the idea. Okay. So yes. I've got, I, I, you know, this tells me that I, I want to do the database upgrade on the East database server. So I'm going to force my user to log in. So I've got authentication and I'm not classing email as there being anything that even smells like something that's secure. So I'm forced my user to log in and I have to actually say, okay, well, I'm going to say that that's approved and I hit complete. If I hit, uh, hit, you know, denied, the user would be returned back to their normal state and being told that this is why it's been denied. But I'm going to hit complete. Okay. So a couple of things going to happen there. Firstly, I should get a second mail telling me that that database was upgraded. Yeah. Okay, so that's been approved. <laughs> and then finally, if I head back to my uh if I head back to my environment. Okay. I think that might have been it there. Eight seconds. Yeah, you can see actually that that, that actually ran that completed. It it ran the approved database update. Uh, and actually completed the task for me. So I, I can actually have some workflow to actually complete that and that's com that, that's finished. That is a super simple capability of workflow automation. Adding a form and some process to one of the backend IT tasks that, that you might want to do. And, you know, for anybody who's already using our sort of runbook automation or thinking about it, this is a you know, I, I, you know, I, I talked to a customer this afternoon and we were talking not about this in any shape or form. And, you know, it got to the point where there was like, well, you know, we'd like to do approvals in, in, our, in our flows. But, you know, the team that actually make this happen, you know, just so overworked, it's going to take us months and months to actually get a form in place. So we were thinking of you know, building our own HTML form. I'm like, let me show you this, right? The, you know, how, how do we do it? And, and, and I'll show you just as we uh, as we go through about actually how that is actually built. Um, let me show you here. Okay, so. Even though you're not showing that in the workflow, Justin, you know, technically with um, the plugins with the workflow side, you could actually send all that data into like a service now incident or a, a Jura ticket or, you know, something for like that ITSM tracking and um, just to make sure that you're covering your basis. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. 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 So, I love the email piece too. Yeah. Well, and, and I talk about email, right. But let, let me give you another quick example. Um, this is one for an upgrade schedule, Same, similar sort of thing. I'm, I'm showing you another, another form. But, you know, I go in there and I request an upgrade, but equally, I could be doing this in Slack and I will get a notification in here saying, hey, I need to do a database update. Oh, there we, there we go. Approve, approve yes or no. Yes, I do approve that. It could be in Slack. I, I can approve from SMS messages. You know, I can approve from the form. So so I've got I've got all these different ways of interacting with the service to actually you know, to 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 be able to say, you know, yes, this is OK. I, I mean, I probably probably wouldn't recommend SMS again if we're uh, if we're doing anything <laughs> that might have might have cost or risk associated. Right. But you you, you, you kind of get the idea. So how how are these built? And I can show you a quick my, my approval flow in here is super simple. Um, take a second to open. Always takes longer when you're showing people. Right. <laughs> um, but. If I if I took a look, this was this was my approval. I mean, it, there was simply just three steps in there. Now, when I when I talk about runbook automation, um, 
you you know that's probably the more technical side of the platform you know because typically we're orchestrating the scripts and the commands that you already know and you've run workflow automation slides to that other side now this is more where either people don't have the technical skills they might not have the time they might be just power users or citizen developers within the organization so um i've got the 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 capability and the ease of user experience about building these front ends or these this these 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 these, these kind of workflow automations but i've also got that now now that power of um, of run book automation sitting at the back, you know, doing the high volume tasks to, you know, tens of thousands of endpoints if I potentially wanted to do that. So I'm going to open in the builder. I'm just going to show you how this is built. This is very, very simple. There's like maybe three steps in there. So, you know, I've, I've got my request. I post the approval and I send the email response. I don't even think I've got much. Uh, I've, not, I've not even got much workflow in there. So. <laughs> I can have logic no. in there, but this is this is you know it, it was literally that easy to actually you know to actually start to build. But if I if I if I wanted to build a flow, just 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 to give you an idea about some of the power here. I think I think Bobby talked about we talked about seven hundred integrations for for PagerDuty itself for the core incident response platform. So that's 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 seven hundred of you know ingesting data from different tools different different platforms change change ingestion you know slack teams and all of those kind of things we talked about maybe 150 plugins for the run book automation so interacting with aws and gcp and azure and, and ansible and service now um there's so the about nerd stuff just the nerd a, stuff the, the, but there's about 300 integrations in in, in here as well so if i create yes. a just a blank template, and I'm just going to call it demo round. Well, I wish I could spell. Okay, no, okay. It's Hold Thursday. On. It's optional. I, I know, I know, and it's getting quite late here as well. So, um, just think of this as you know triggers and actions. A trigger might be um, a webhook. It might be a web form. Um, as this comes in, but there's a few triggers in here. You know. I'm going to start this maybe when a new lead in Salesforce is. So, you know, I'm, I'm sort of tickling the business side here a, a little bit. I, I, I am going to kind of focus on the tech, but just bear this in mind that, that this exists. When something appears in a, you know, SFTP or a, in, in a slash command in, in, in Slack, I'm going to focus around the web forms um, in this case. Uh, but whenever that particular... Um, trigger is initiated then call a you know it's a call and response kind of scenario and i can show you here possibly okay so assign a task to a person but if i if i if i, if I actually go back here um i've got around about these um 300 well, maybe 400 now different yeah. tasks that that, that that i can work with yeah clearly send an email assign a task um tables look up into a, my own data tables my own my my own data that i might use Re, you know loops in workflows thing, things like that interactions with you know back end systems like 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 service now let me let me give you some integrations here for example integrations into s3 um box docusign uh, github you know, we we know that there are you know a number of automation tools that can do some of these business kind of by business processes, but this is all in a single platform now. So you you've got the technology, you've got the you know you've got the business side of this all all, all, all together. So I mean, I think I think it's kind of I think it's kind of interesting. And as I go to each of those, I've got configuration. I can take pull data out. You can see, you know, I, I don't know. Let's let's try, let's let's take a typical Okta. You know, create a user in your Okta organization. Okay, delete a user. So you can start to set up those tasks when some a new user gets on board that you're going to set up their passwords you're going to set up their octa user it, this is this is this capability is is quite wide um so any, anyway i i want to focus back on what we were sort of almost talking about originally um going back to now those you know those ideas of being able to do forms based 
front ends, being able to do workflow in there, being able to do those, you know, the, the, those automations, oh, sorry, those authorizations seem the kind of the, you know, the first order need that we see from 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 customers um, at, at the moment. Though, of course, once you have the platform in place, these are all these other kind of uh, scenarios. So I've got what I've got a really it, I've got a what really I love about it, Justin, is that you haven't uh, you haven't had to write a bash script one time. It's you know clearly uh, you know or even using your Ruby excellent skills, right? You're basically going to drop drag and drop and start to build this amazing form so uh, us non-techies you know now we can act like we're a tech genius or automation sre genius i yeah i mean i you know i've met a lot of people and you know who are very sort of capable of articulating exactly what they need but they yes. get kind of crippled by not not being able to be a developer or they, they get they get you know they get hamstrung by it definitely and, uh, and you know this is this is a good way to say okay well what what do you want to do although there's some still some technology in there right you're working still with data at the end of it but you know between this and generative ai right the, the, these are these are things that enable um power users within an organization to start, start actually to to help build their own sort of sort of an environment and this is one that was generated by a previous colleague actually for a an employee um onboarding kind of scenario where as a um you know as a new user comes into the organization it will do things like uh my email address okay that i can show you this uh, and this is this is this is just really for fun i'm just showing you this um uh, right this is going to be perfect now we're going to have two justins at pager duty so now we expect double the work from the one justin so that's yeah. I think you're setting yourself up, Justin, for a little failure. <laughs> yeah, something like that. So anyway, uh, yeah. So anyway, this has started me me a um, yeah. What is this? Yeah, yeah. So this has now started this workflow where it will go off. It builds me. Well, you can see some of this, and you watch this in real time as it happens. Um, you know creates a welcome packet in PowerPoint, sends me a, a welcome email, uses OCR to scan the driver's license to pull out a, a number. So there are, you know, many, many, many capabilities in here beyond just those, those um, you know, those, those kind of IT front ending process kind of scenarios. I just wanted just to show you this as a bit of a showcase. Um, really simple to start to you know to get get up and up and working integrates well with um with the existing automation and even incident response that you know we can we can use this to even to front end maybe if you've got some kind of you know sort of crisis form that you need you you don't have to use the pager duty as this the front end for for generating things like incidents and you will see as we move forward more of these you know, look and feel starting to come together, you know, as, a, you know, as a completely unified platform. So sometimes you get a bit of a change as you go between, you know, between between Rumbook automation and you go to to here, for example, the look and feel is slightly different, um, but they do, they do, they do integrate together. They do start to slot together. Um, conscious, it's nearly 10 minutes to, um, and I've kind of waffled on for, for 20 minutes, um so any questions is there anything that i can dig into anything that you want to drive into a little deeper or meet me for me to give you a you know sort of a, a deeper demo yeah if anybody has any questions you can put them in the chat you can use the q a function at the bottom of your screen if you'd like to do that either way would be great we'd love to answer your questions uh chris asks is this workflow screen within run deck or some other tool yeah, it's within some other tool at the moment. You know, we will see it start to move across to the core of core of pager duty, um, and you will start to see a, a unified look and feel across across all the platform. So, you know, yeah, it, it, th th there's a bit of jumping around now, but you're still going to get the functionality. You know, for the sake of having to log into two places, you know, I, th I think I think the trade-off's fine, and um, we're going to change it in the future. 
Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I did some math. So like you're, as you're rattling off all the numbers for the integrations, right? We have got like 700 on PageDuty proper and like 150 plugins on run deck and then like 300 things in the workflow. That's 31,500,000 combinations. Just if you only pick one and like a lot of the things you can use multiple plugins, you can use multiple pieces of the workflow as you're building this all up. So like the creativity, the number of things that you can accomplish with all these components together is more than any of us can comprehend in our human brains. Like there's just so much in there that, that you can do. The good part is like, you can start with the most basic stuff that you've got, right? You have something coming in so, from your alerts and it fires off a job and go for so, it. Some, somebody could throw something at us that sounds like every time I get a customer case in Salesforce, I want to trigger an update to my 25,000 endpoints. I'm in, in, you know, oh, and they're a mixture of Linux and, and Windows. And, you know, I've got some serverless in there. You, you could do all of that. I mean, it's just like, you, you know, as a solution consultant, I hope it's the same for you, right, Bob? You know, yeah. we say yes a lot, right? And that's that's quite oh, good. Yeah. And I, I like to say yes, you know, because you can, you know, you can feel nice and warm and fuzzy. <laughs> I think what we're really driving is we're going to have some new uh, new uh, names coming out, like a BRE, a business reliability engineer with this catalytic pieces, right? Give them like, hey, it's not all about SRE in our world anymore. Hey, the BRE can do this. Or an FRE, a finance reliability engineer, giving them the, you know, the opportunity to drive some automation as well. So, yeah. And, 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 let, and let's not forget, right, you know, that, the, you know, the, the, the SREs and the DevOps teams have been, you know, driven into the ground a little bit by being experts <laughs> in so many things. You know, Man, Mandy, I know you know this and you talk about this a lot on a, a lot of your things, but they've been driven into the ground with it. What? This should win hearts and minds because it means that they can just, you know, they talk about shift left, right? Yeah. I, I, my 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 favorite phrase is just shift away, <laughs> you know, just <laughs> just just shift somewhere else. Look, like, you know, it's something that I don't have to do because I've done that piece of automation once, and now I can hand it off to anybody in the organization with the right authorization. And Absolutely. Exactly. Here's this beautiful little package with all the guardrails already built in. And you can just give it to somebody else to it's do whenever safe. they need to. It's safe. It's secure. Yeah. It's logged. I know who's ran it, exactly the parameters they've put in. Yeah, that's, yep. that, that's kind of where it sits. Awesome, for sure. So where can folks find more information? We're kind of getting close to the top of the hour. I don't see any additional questions, but we're always available. If you want to put your questions into the PagerDuty common site at community.pagerduty.com, we will uh, route your questions if we can't answer them. Uh, for anything else, Justin, Bobby, where should folks be looking? Uh, yeah, anybody can contact me if they want. Jay Roberts at pagerduty.com. Um, I think, you know, there's plenty of trials. If anybody wants to try something, again, again, give us a shout. I mean, there's the, the you know, the commons environment, forums, anything anything like that. There, there, there's tons of ways. Just just come and find us. We're all happy to help. Um, yeah. Yeah. If you're Go an on, existing Mandy. customer, please reach out to your account team. You can re account, reach out to my team. We're community-team at pagerduty.com. We can always uh, find you to the right people as well. So. Yeah. And Jenna has put a bunch of things in the chat there, things that are coming up, other things that are available, uh, training at PDU. If you're new to PagerDuty, there's lots of modules there that are free to use. You work through at your own pace. They're kind of mixed media, sort of gamified little bits and pieces and videos and all kinds of good stuff there as you're learning the platform that's super helpful. Um, so yeah, after the webinar, you will receive a survey. Please let us know what you think. Um, and if you have something else that you would like us to include in the series, uh, when we come back from the holidays, we would love to hear it. Um, I think we've got one more for the year. I don't think we have anything in December because schedules in December are kind of shaky. People take a lot of vacation, um, but we are looking forward to doing more of these in the new year. But we want to hear from you, what you want to hear about, what parts of the product you're struggling with, or you have questions about, or you're not sure if you're going to need this thing that's available. Uh, please reach out, let us know. We'd be happy to cover that for you in great depth so that you have a good idea of what's available there. So, yeah. If there's nothing else, we'll let you go. Guys, thank you so much for being with us this week. This has been great. Thank you, team. Thank you, Mandy. Take thank care. you, Justin. All right. Bye -bye. Have an uneventful day, everybody. We'll see you again in two weeks.